Good morning. Uh, welcome to Midweek Connection on August 24th, 2022. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to do our reading of our daily lectionary for the day and uh, looking forward to an opportunity to discuss it together and see where God might lead us uh, as we read his word. Let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for this day. The many blessings that you have provided for us and the opportunity that you give us to hear your word and to reflect upon it. I pray, Lord, that this would be a time that is glorifying to you and is building up of the community. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. This morning, we're going to start with Psalm uh, 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed, O you who answer prayer. To you all flesh shall come, when deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you establish the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. And our second psalm is Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and the song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture reading is from Job today, Job chapter 7. Then Job answered, Do not human beings have a hard service on earth? And are not their days like the days of a laborer, like a slave who longs for the shadow and like laborers who look for their wages? So I am allotted months of emptiness and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My flesh is clothed with worms and dirt. My skin hardens, then breaks out again. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. The eye that beholds me will see me no more. While your eyes are upon me, I shall be gone. As the cloud fades and vanishes, so those who go down to Sheol do not come up. They return no more to their houses, nor do their places know them any more. Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the sea or the dragon that you set a guard over me? When I say my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions, so that I would choose strangling and death rather than this body. I loathe my life. I would not live forever. Let me alone, for my days are a breath. 
What are human beings that you make so much of them, that you set your mind on them, visit them every morning, test them every moment? Will you not look away from me for a while? Let me alone until I swallow my spittle. If I sin, what do I do to you, you watcher of humanity? Why have you made me your target? Why have I become a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now I shall lie in the earth. You will seek me, but I shall not be. And from the New Testament, Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. He stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? He answered, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa for a certain Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. When the angel spoke to him, the angel who spoke to him had left. He called two of his slaves and a devout soldier from the ranks of those who served him. And after telling them everything, he sent them to Joppa. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven open and something like a large green sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. Our gospel text today is from John chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He did not wish to go about in Judea because the Jews were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now the Jewish festival of booths was near, so his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one who wants to be widely known acts in secret. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify against it that its works are evil. Go to the festival yourselves. I am not going to this festival, for my time has not yet fully come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone to the festival, then he also went, not publicly, but as it were, in secret. The Jews were looking for him at the festival and saying, Where is he? And there was considerable complaining about him among the crowds. While some were saying, He is a good man, others were saying, No, he is deceiving the crowd. Yet no one would speak openly about him for fear of the Jews. Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, from this time on and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous might not stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their own crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. And our final psalm today is Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. He will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. 
you will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, how can you not read that Job chapter 7 and, uh, not, and then not comment on it? <laughs> right. Um, um, one of the things that I, uh, that Natalie and I, when we talk about uh, doing uh, one of these midweek connections is, uh, did you read the scriptures ahead of time? Did you plan out something to say? And sometimes we do. Sometimes we look over them ahead of time, and sometimes uh, we don't. And today was one of those days when I saw it was a Job passage, and I actually didn't read it ahead of time uh, because I wanted to feel kind of the impact um, of Job's words, knowing that... Uh, Job is a difficult book um, because it, it draws into uh, it draws into our imagination that uh, that the concept uh, and, and the reality of how God uh, interacts with people for His purposes and His plans that that we don't always uh, we don't always see the the background behind it we don't always see the Conclusion of it uh, when we are experiencing the things in our lives. And obviously, uh, Job has experienced some great tragedy. Uh, if, if you go back and read uh, those first few chapters of Job, you will see how um, this is a very severe test that, that Job is undergoing. Um, but I think in that, uh, when I when I think about the people in this church, and I think about uh, some of the concerns that people have shared with me, and and realizing increasingly realizing that people today are experiencing huge challenges, and people today are experiencing um, difficulties that they don't know how to deal with. Nobody can really rank severity uh, amongst individuals. You know, what might be easy for some people could be difficult for others, and, and people are experiencing different, uh, different things in different contexts. But uh, I think what um, I really want to emphasize, even from the Job passage, is uh, these are words that are recorded in Scripture, that this is a, this is a real person that experienced real tragedy. And his response is, um, is, is raw and uh, quite severe uh, to, to, uh, to really complain uh, to, uh, to God and to his friends who are uh, witnessing his, his tragedy and his response to it. Um, I think give voice to those of us who who could experience something similar. Uh, and, and I think what I want to get from that, or what I am getting from that, is uh, God is big enough to handle our most severe complaints. Right. Um, and, and again, Job doesn't know the end of the story yet. Right. Uh, ultimately, Job is restored, and that, that's important for us to remember. Um, but in the midst of that, cries out to God, and God hears his cry. Uh, and that, I think that's just important for us to remember. God hears our cry. Um, and, and if you are in a place where uh, you've experienced something or are undergoing um, a, a trial or, a, uh, or just hopelessness even, uh, God, God listens. God hears God hears your cry. Uh, God knows you 
God loves you. Uh, God is in some way revealing himself in the midst of this in, in ways that we don't always understand. Um, and I think that's actually okay because um, I don't understand everything. Right. Nor do I have the capacity to understand everything. Uh, but, but knowing that God is there, knowing that God hears us, and, and knowing that um, God is with us in the midst of difficult things, uh, for me anyway, um, is not even always enough, right. <laughs> especially when you're in the middle of it, right? Right, right. I don't know. It's just, uh, I, and I'm, I don't know exactly how this connects to anything else yet. I'm just, well, uh, just thinking about it. And so Job is always a tough one for me because God's not doing this to Job, but yet Satan has come to him and God has said, test him. And he knew the outcome. He knew that Job would remain faithful, which I think is this weird tension because he knew he was going to remain faithful even though he's crying out to God and he is in such a deep and dark place. And you can't blame him for that. I mean, it's it's awful, the things that he's going through. And, and God is allowing this to happen. He knows it's happening, but he does see the ending. And so it's always a tough one. Uh, Job is tough because, you know, I, I don't think God does bad things to us. He's not. He's allowing it to happen in Job. He does know the outcome. He does. In, in humanity, I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in our despair, in our bitterness, in our darkness. Again, not that any of that to take away from what he was going through, but we get into that. And sometimes we do cry out to God in blame. It wasn't God doing those things, even though he allowed it to happen. But I think the other two scriptures, you can look at them as well. And you look at humanity and sometimes humanity's response to God and the interaction. And in that Acts passage, you know, they go and and they, they go to sleep and they have this dream. They're like, well, I can't, I have never eaten anything unclean before. You expect me to defile myself like that? And, and it's like, God says, no, no, what I have made clean you don't get to make unclean. Right. And so we as, you know, this this humanity going well, but clinging on to, you know, the law, the rules, things like that, whereas God supersedes all of that. Um, and then you have the John passage when the disciples are speaking with Jesus and they're like, well, this is how to do this or you need to do this. And he's like, it's not my time yet. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I definitely think you've got humanity who sees it from our side and and in Job this this despair and this and then you have in the New Testament you have these people saying well this is the way things should be you have God who sees the eternal you have right. God who sees um, what how all of this is going to play out and like you said that doesn't make it any easier when you're living it right. or when you're being asked to do things that you don't understand because of course they don't ever, you know, their whole life they've been spent. This is unclean. This is unclean. This is, this is the way you do things. And then all of a sudden, God has turned things upside Something down. Something different, right. And that can be difficult for us. And so then I think the same thing is true, though, when God is asking us to trust or God is asking us to do things that we don't understand. I think sometimes we have to get the humanity out of the way and say, he does know and he does right. He does care for us. He does love us. He is the God of provision, and he is going to provide. He is going to restore. He is going to do all of those things. But that's when you're living it. It doesn't make it any easier to right. see that, and that can be so difficult. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I love what you said about you know getting kind of the humanity out of the way and letting God be God. You know, I know there's that uh, the the standard phrase. You know, we like to keep God in the box. You know, we think that we understand. We think that we know how God operates. We think that, you know, God is always going to do things the same way He's always done them before. You know, the, uh, you know, back when, you know, the good old days of, of anything, when it was really fun for me and now it's something different. We're like, well, we just want to go back to the way it was and whatever it might happen to be. But uh, again, I think both you're right. The John and the Acts passage are addressing those two things. Um, you know, Peter had an understanding of how God operated, and uh, 
but God's revealing something new to Peter. At the same time, uh, even Cornelius had uh, probably an idea of what he thought God was going to do. And so this this idea of, of bringing a, a, a Gentile and a Jew together around the one person of Jesus Christ um, is the totally radical. It's the, right. it's the totally unexpected thing, um, at least from a human uh, human right. side. And so uh, uh, I guess for us, looking at these passages, um, just re being reminded again and again how God is bigger than we are. God is greater than we are. God is worthy of our praise, the only one to whom we should give glory and honor, um, uh, even in the hard times. You know, yes, in the good times. And God does give good times. You know, there are, there are many things that we should rightfully celebrate uh, the blessings that God has given. Uh, but I think over and over and over again, we find God working frequently in those difficult times that really draws us closer to him in greater dependence. So yeah, let's not let's not keep God in the box, right? Let's let him do God things because that's who he is. He's always acting, he's always moving, he's always um, calling us to depend more on him. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think what's what, what's great about all of those psalms that we read today are all these provision and protection psalms. I right. think it was I think it was a good balance with <laughs> with Job today. It's like wait no no he does bring the rain he does bring the growth he does protect he does provide all. Of, right. It's like I think we needed some of that because man that Job passage was hard. Job was, um, harsh. Job Job was, was harsh. Job was a little harsh. Yeah, well, okay, well, great. I'm glad that you guys joined us today, and uh, thank you, Natalie, for um, for sharing your, your thoughts on these passages as well. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, do you want to close this in prayer? I'd be happy to. Great. Heavenly Father, thank you for your words to us today. Um, help us to, um, to use those words and to look at those words and to see, um, even in the difficult words, and, and even as we see despair in Scripture and well, not understanding in scripture help us to see that in our lives that even in those same moments um, for us that that you are continually at work in our lives and that um, you do see the outcome and that you are working for the good and um, and that we trust you that we can trust you in that um, even in the most difficult moments and um, in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. All right, everybody, I uh, certainly hope you have a great day, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.